So Rob, after a month of waiting, the big Rockwell United Technologies deal is out there and it's very much along the lines that have been uh, rumored and reported all along. What did we really learn today? Well, we learned we learned the price. So mm. the price was they were saying up to $140 per share, um, and they came in exactly and they the, 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 right at exactly the top of the range. So it's $23 billion, mm -hmm. and that's a lot. Um, they've they've said there are about 500 millions of, of cost cutting synergies, about what we we've, we've, we've projected, and that we did the math, and it said that was worth about close to the premium, so a little bit more than the premium. But the real return for, um, the real reason United Technologies is interested in buying Rockwell Collins is because they, um, they want to become bigger. Yeah. Uh, Boeing is getting into the components game, and if they're bigger, that means that it, Boeing can't necessarily, or won't want to produce all these parts because they don't want to anger a key supplier. So they want, they want negotiating heft with their partners. Um, so what my colleague Richard Beals did is he crunched the numbers and said, okay, so, so strategically it makes sense, you know, perhaps pays the premium, but what kind of return are they actually getting on the on the deal? Yeah. So he, he plugged in all the numbers they gave, the cost cuts, uh, analyst estimates, and the returns aren't great. It's it's not bad, but it's not great. It's, so it's five percent return on on their investment. The cost of capital is probably about eight eight point five percent. So it looks like the deal is probably going to be a little bit value destructive unless they can um, unless they can goose some more returns, in other words, cut more costs or gain uh, some sway over, over Boeing and Airbus. That's going to be difficult because it is, as, you know, it's a small market. You're really competing against two, two suppliers. Already Airbus has sent some warnings about mm -hmm. you should be focusing on getting your existing contracts specifically for engines uh, to us rather than talking about getting bigger. Yeah, but then also step back and say, okay, so if Airbus is warning them against doing that, perhaps that's the type of thing they should be doing. Um, like I said, you know, it, it's it's kind of a fraught relationship because they depend so much on these suppliers. But then again, uh, the suppliers depend on them as well. So they, it's kind of cooperating and competing at the same time. Um, past deals have gone really well. They, when they bought Goodrich, um, I think it was about five years ago or more yeah. than that, um, they got actually more savings than they had projected, and the business became uh, it. it by a lot of analyst accounts, they gained sales as well because they became a key supplier in lots of things. And Airbus and Boeing just found it easier to, to use them. And also they could integrate the parts better, you know, make them so that, for instance, they could save fuel by working, making the parts work together, and that's, that's attractive for airlines. But the modest return on this deal suggests there's going to be a lot of speculation about the, the future of United Technologies. I mean, this is mm -hmm. one of the last great conglomerates. Aerospace is now a huge part of the company. You're going to sit there and look at the air conditioning, uh, the Otis elevators yeah, and stuff it, like that it, and it's, say, it's uh, what goes on? It's a beast from a long time ago. You know, mm -hmm. it, why are these businesses together? Well, it's probably happenstance. You know, do you really need elevators and aircraft components in the same company? No, not at all. Um, and uh, undoubtedly, um, activists across Wall Street are looking at this firm and saying, well, you know, perhaps this is one of the, an easy win for us. The, the, um, the, the, the deal may actually make it more likely that United Technologies splits up just because the business can stand, the airplane business can stand on its own a bit better now that it's bigger. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised at all to see activists start circling. And the fact that the Rockwell CEO is going to um, run the business, that's, that's also a hint in that direction? That's also a good thing, yeah, because Rockwell's got very good uh, returns on their business, so I, I'm sure Wall Street would be happy with that. Okay, great. Thanks, Rob, and join us tomorrow for more Breaking Views.